Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to Deck Profiles. I know, been a while, but we're back. Uh, we are not doing the Deep Six uh, Deck Profiles this time. Uh, quite honestly, it's boring format. You play Avengers and that's it. So we're going to go into Multiverse, and the first Multiverse Deck Profile I've got for you, since forever, is Groot. Because I don't think I did one in Cosmic Power, because I didn't really play him. So anyway, I'm playing him now. So, let's get straight into Groot. He's a 1-1, one, one, 6 health, he's a guardian of the galaxy. He has the keyword, I am Groot. Any turn combat, green. Groot gets plus 1, plus 1, this combat for each resource on your side. So he gets better as the game goes on. Level up, I am Groot. Requires 5 experience. When you gain a resource, Groot gains an XP. So around 5 turns. But you can speed that up with Nick Fury and Mantis, and which we do. And when he does level up, because he's really, really weak, so there's going to have a lot of um, wounds on him, most likely. He becomes an 8-8, so he's now quite thick. He retains I Am Groot, which is brilliant for an 8-8, and gets even bigger. So say if you do level up on 5, you can pay the green to become 13-13, which is pretty solid. And then has another level up because uh, it goes into level 3. He did have an original level 2. This one, he's a 776 with Iron Group. I and mean, when he has the super We Are Group. So in the main, you pay a blue healer wound from uh, from each character on your side. Then Group becomes level 1. Very thematic to um, his movie uh, in Guardians 1. But we don't use this because it's rubbish. So in the bin. But we do use this one because he can level up to a level 3 character. Uh, when he does level up to that level 3 character, he needs 3 XP this time. When you gain a resource, Groot gains the XP. So another 3 turns of that. You go to Groot level 3. He's a 10-7. 10-10 with 7 health. Retains I am Groot. And now has another superpower. I am Groot. Main. Blue. You put plus 1, plus 1 counters on Groot. Equal to the number of resources on your side. So unlike with the green I am Groot. He actually gets the plus one, plus one counters, and you don't have to do that in combat. So Groot is just a big, big tree. And that's all, he, all there is to him, really. He gets bigger as the game progresses, so he is definitely a ramp deck. Let's get on to the supporting characters. Firstly, we have Charlie27. Probably the, one of the best uh, one-drops in the game, in my personal opinion, if you're playing greens anyway. He's a 1-1, one, one, one cost. <laughs> Very similar to Groot in a way. <laughs> but uh, he has three health on on, uh, on him. And he has Jovian strength. Combat green. Charlie 27 gains attack and defense until he is 27 27. So unless they're cancelling the combat or stunning him without uh, getting his stats to zero, he's going to punch through and hit that character and probably stun him wounded. So yeah, Charlie 27 is brilliant on turn one up until the end of the game, really. And then we have Mantis, because we need Mantis to speed up our level up condition, because when Mantis gets KO'd, you may turn her into a face down resource, which gives Groot XP. But make sure you crash the Mantis uh, before you crash Groot, <laughs> otherwise you won't uh, gain the XP, because obviously you don't get gain XP when she's down. But she's a 2-3-1-2 two, two cost. One copy of Leviathan Demolisher, 2-3 uh, Leviathan, 1 health. One of a kind creature, come before when Leviathan Demolisher appears, you put a minus one, minus one character on each enemy character. And Tectonic Impact, when Leviathan Demolisher appears, you turn enemy location face down. Very good if you time it right. And then another character that helps our group's level up condition is Nick Fury. He is a three cost Avenger, one five with range, with one health. The vast resources of shield, main, yellow. Put the top card of your deck face down in your resource room. If it's a location, you may turn it face up. Now, this is a really, really good power to have, but because it uses yellow, you do have to watch out for the, for the next card I will show you is Jessica Jones. But he does really speed up your level up condition, and he does have five defense, so sometimes you can keep him around for a turn, and he can potentially use it again. So Nick Fury is brilliant. And speaking of the Jessica Jones, we play two copies of her. She's a three-cost defender, four-three flying with three health. As the keyword tough, so when Jessica Jones gets stunned, you may recover her. And she has a very annoying power, psionic protection. 
enemy players can't use the yellow superpowers. So obviously it prevents my Nick Fury from using him. But if I go first and drop the Nick on three, obviously my opponent hasn't had their turn three to play their Jessica Jones. So yeah, and all the, not all decks play Jessica Jones anyway. But yeah, most decks do. <laughs> Uh, we next we move on to our fours. We've got Boomerang. We play three Boomerang. Uh, he is a sinister syndicate supporting character. He's two four flight range with one health and has lots and lots of Boomerang powers. He has specialized Boomerang keyword power. So once per turn, during your main phase, but not during combat, you may choose a Boomerang. This character hasn't thrown yet. Then choose an enemy front and back row character and apply the following effects. So if you do Blade Orang, you put a minus one minus one counter on each of them. Gas Orang, they lose keyword power this turn. Gravity Rang, they can't ready on their next turn. Razor Rang, they lose their superpowers this turn. Uh, Reflexor Rang, you daze them. Uh, Scream Rang, they can't strike back this turn. And Shatter Rang, KO and uh, equipment on each of them. So this is a very, very uh, good u uh, utility card. Uh, obviously, he's got poor stats, but the amount of powers and the amount of stuff he can do warrants this card in my deck because he's very, very useful in various situations and that's why i play three of them because i want to see it but i don't want to have it as a character because the two four is pretty weak so and this is a character that i do want to see that can fight and that's massacre he's a four cost uh underworld five free range with two health his, his keywords are written in spanish but his mercenary means he can team attack with main characters and lethal which means if he wounds a sporting character in combat you ko it simple as that five free two health and being able to team attack with Groot when he's uh, level 3 or 2 is fairly, fairly large. <laughs> with a lethal team attack, anyway. Next, we play a Savage Leviathan. It's a Leviathan, of course. 5-4, <laughs> one health, one of a kind. Creature, Comet form. This one has staggering impact. When Savage Leviathan appears, you may push an enemy front row character to its back row. Very useful in a pinch. And we have another Leviathan here. Uh, it's a 5 cost, 6-6, six, six, one health, one of a kind. Creature, Comet form. This one has disintegrating impact when Spike Leviathan appears. You may remove an enemy KO apart from the game. And this is uh, getting more useful as the game progresses because it's very useful against the Sentinels. Gets rid of all of them from the. remove them from the KO path so that any future Sentinels that come into play are weaker. Great against decks that rely on their KO apart, like Death, for example. Uh, great against the Valkyrie main character. It's just. And it's just great at get, getting rid of characters from the KO pile. So uh, Silver Surfer and Ghost Rider don't get as big, uh, get their powers off as well as they should do. So yeah, Spot of Viathan is a, a great sporting character. Next, we move on to something that is fairly vital, in my personal opinion, to a uh, Groot deck. Because Groot does start out as a 1-1, so against aggressive decks, he is going to take a beating. And that's why we play four copies of Thor, the female version, Jane Foster. She is a 5 cost Avenger, 3 7 flight, 2 health, aka Jane Foster. A god who knows her precious life is. When Thor appears, she may pay a yellow. If she does, heal a wound from a character on your side with exactly one remaining health. And because we level up on turn 5, that could be us because we've probably got about 4 wounds by then at five if we're going second and that's why we need female four because we need to level up to level three to have a chance of winning and that's what she is in the deck for hence the <laughs> yeah hence why she's in here with four four copies <laughs> uh do bear in mind that it's not a super power so jessica jones cannot stop that which is absolutely brilliant and the other keyboard power is there must always be a thor so when she is KO'd. You may search your deck for a Thor supporting character, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Doesn't search yourself because she's not Thor. She is um, Star Star Thor. Uh, so yeah, uh, that would be brilliant if she did search herself. <laughs> I probably wouldn't. Well, I probably would still would play Thor, but yeah, she is, um, in my opinion, staple in the deck because you need to account for all matchups, not just the one. So yeah. Next, two copies of Thing. Get your Thing out. Uh, Thing is a six cost Fantastic Four character. He's a 10 6 4 health. As a keyword, uh, sorry, keyword, super, it's clobbering time. Combat green. The Thing gets plus 10 attack and can't be stunned this combat. I play greens in the deck, and if, if I don't see the greens, he's 10 6 on 6, you know, it's really solid. 
He has the other keyword power of rock like skin and the full health is very relevant as well. Any turn combat, the thing gets plus 10 defense this combat. So when you're attacking, plus 10. When you're defending, plus 10 defense. Or you, or you could uh, play it in the defense as well to prevent getting struck. But it's better to play that one anyway because you don't get struck anyway. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah, thing is brilliant. I did play two copies because it's got full health. So Next, uh, Leviathan Beast. 6 cost, 6, 8. Leviathan, 1, cost, uh, one health, sorry. One of a kind creature, Comet Form. This one has concussive impact, so when the Leviathan Beast appears, you may daze an enemy character. This is good at getting rid of an annoying blocker, the flying blocker, or getting rid of something that's got a lot of counters and you can't really hit over just yet. So the minus one, minus one is very relevant as well. So. Next, for our last Leviathan, it's seven cost dual mile Leviathan, 871, one of a kind creature comet fall, and this one has mind blown impact. When dual mile Leviathan appears, each enemy player discards two cards. Very useful in a pinch, and especially against this aggro deck, so they're top decking, just play that against them. They lose their shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next, two copies of Jungle Thunder. I would like to put more in, but I just can't find the room because I'm paying, I'm playing both the greens and the blues, uh, Valver, Jungle, and the Pedal Ship. So playing more of this card is only better, but I'm only playing two because I can only fit the two in. So, yeah. So Jungle Hunter is a 6 6 7, costs two health. Predator. He is using the trees keyword. When Jungle Hunter appears, you may search your deck for a location and put it onto your side. And if you are uh, level two, um, this can give you an XP, which is really nice. And another thing, another reason why I want to play more, but I just can't fit it in. And the other keyword is Otherworld Life on Wall of our world and Jungle location is on your side. Jungle Hunter has plus three attack and stealth. Uh, stealth is you can melee attack back row characters even if they are protected. And then while a predator ship location is on your side, Jungle Hunt has plus three attack and invade. Invade is if you are attacking a back row character, they can't strike back at you. And they stack onto one another. So you have a valve the jungle and predator ship has plus six and stealth and invade. So yeah, Jungle Hunt is one of the best seven costs in the game. And that's why I want to play more, but uh, I, I, the only things I can cut is four, but I don't want to cut four. I don't want to cut Nick Fury either. <laughs> it's just tough. You've got to make tough decisions. Next, two copies of Gilgamesh. He's an 8 cost, 16 16, flying with one health. He is an Avenger. Eternal, if Gilgamesh would leave play, you put him into your owner's hand instead. So if they do manage to beat over that 16 16, he's coming back next turn anyway. <laughs> He also has the keyword of the Forgotten One, so at the end of your turn, if you didn't say Gilgamesh this turn, he loses and can't gain Eternal. So what you need to do is play this man with uh, all that leather on him and say his name. <laughs> yeah, Gilgamesh is uh, one of the best 8 costs in the game, but maybe rivaled by Namor when that comes out, so yeah. Next, we move on to the absolutely brilliant monarch he's eight cost uh, an omega card so you can only include one omega in your deck and the one omega i've chose to include is the absolutely brilliant monarch <laughs> he's a 615 one health and uh yeah he has lots of text so the omega lone mutant you're going to include one of those in your deck we already mentioned that pull on quantum strings when you recruit monarch turn each face down card in your resource row face up Cards over the locations can be face up in your resource row. Characters on your side can turn face up cards over the locations in your resource row face down to generate any power symbol to pay for their superpowers. So wow, that does a lot. Um, so essentially it's a mass Iron Man, first off. And then second off is you can play cards in your resource row face up and then use them as locations to pay for superpowers. And then if you look at Groot, it's level 3 using the greens and the blues he wants to gain plus counters with the blue wants to get plus one in combat with the green and loves the fact that uh, he, he's in a location hungry main character and then i'm using obviously um thing for the greens uh, this isn't a superpower but i do use the yellows uh nick fury and uh, charlie 27 so this is a fairly location hungry deck not as location hungry as other decks but yeah, Monarch is just one of the best Omegas in the game, and quite honestly, it, it's uh, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful in certain strategies. 
So yeah, that's why I'm playing two Monarch. And then lastly, I play Dark Phoenix. Uh, only playing one because in our play group we have decided that we can only include one copy of Dark Phoenix in our decks. Um, as, as like a gentleman's agreement because sometimes playing against decks that just ramp up to Dark Phoenix can just win the game there and then. Like this deck for example, I ramp a lot so if I bring out Dark Phoenix on turn 6 when the opponent's on 6 resources I'm on 9, it's going to feel really unfair to the opponent and that's why we decided to put Dark Phoenix at 1. So if you do get it, it's just a look sack thing but yeah, it's fine. 1 is fine. It's the same thing with Nullifier, it's a really powerful card, but this should have been one of a kind anyway, because it's that powerful, but yep, Nullifier, it's a one of a kind equipment, two cost, ultimate nullification, when Nullifier appears, you name a keyword or super, and we hate enemy characters lose and can't gain that power until Nullifier leaves play. This was the fair version of this, <laughs> but this is still very, very good if you use it properly. And for our other equipment, we play Serpent Crown, seven cost. One of a kind, unwanted gift, equip the Serpent Crown to an unequipped enemy supporting character. I equipped this to a equipped character before, thinking you could do that, but yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> I uh, misread that bit. Well, I didn't misread it, just ignored it. <laughs> so under, set, uh, under sets control, when you equip this to an enemy supporting character, you move that character to your side. When this is equip, unequipped from that character, move it back to the owner's side. So if that character gets stunned, this falls off, but it has multi-health, then it will go back to the opponent's stunned. So yeah, Serpent Crown is really good in a pinch. Stealing their Gilgamesh, and then attack them with their Gilgamesh, if it's ready, of course. And then lastly, for our locations, for Nowhere to use with Groot and uh, Charlie 27. Four Greens to use with Charlie 27, Groot, and The Thing. Four Blues to use with Groot, and to take it and uh, use it as a uh, Invade, slash plus three with Jungle Hunter. Avengers Mansion, purely for Nick Fury and Th Female 4, and the same thing with the yellows, purely for Nick Fury and uh, Jane Foster. So that's been my group deck profile, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. I know it's been a bit long, but yeah, I like, like to explain the cards for the benefit of new players. So yeah, that has been my group deck profile. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. So yeah, bye for now.